Hey mates, do you want to win more Warzone games or at least make it into the top 5 a little bit more consistently? Well, here's 20 tips to help you do just that. Coming in with tip number 1. These tips range from beginner tips to advanced tips, so if you know one, go to the next. Tip number 1 is to do with positioning and being in the centre of the circle. I see so many players die to being in the gas, rotating late or just being caught out making their way to the next circle. From now on, especially after circle 3, position yourself in the centre of the circle as you'll be able to catch people rotating, third party more, get more kills and get yourself into those last circles that little bit easier as well. Tip number 2 is to do with rotating early. Let's say you're in circle 3, your centre circle, you're practising tip 1, the next circle gets announced, you're in the middle of a fight or you line up some kills. Leave that all behind if possible and make your way to the next circle as soon as you can. The early bird catches the worm and that's exactly what will happen. If you make your way to the next circle, get the best position or one of the best positions and you're ready to take on the fights, take on the kills and again keep yourself in the winning position. We are all guilty of not doing tip number three, which is take cover. It is part of your job to minimize the amount your body can be shot in order to win more gunfights. So that means peeking corners, taking covers behind rocks, doorways, buy stations, whatever it is to make sure your enemy is having a hard time trying to kill you. How many times have you seen people run out into a field with no smokes, no covers or not planning their course? Try going from building to building, planning your next spot, trying to predict that if someone was to shoot you, where you could take cover, replate and fire back. Tip number three. Tip number four, I want you to out your teammate who is always dead and pinging the nearest buy station to buy them back, especially when it's the end of the game. People need to stand up to their friends and say, hey, it's the final circle, I'm not going to buy you back. Because one, I've got the guns, the perks, the utility and everything else. And if I go to that buy station, I'm going to die, but you're going to fly in with a pistol. And what good are you going to be able to do then? We all want to win the game together, but realistically going to the buy station in the last few circles when everyone else is wanting to do that, it's only going to put you in a bad position and you'll end up losing the game and watching a teammate fly down just to get absolutely cream pied. Tip number five, shoot and move. Now in most tactical shooters, if you shoot from a spot giving your position away, you then should move, reposition and then take more shots as to not make yourself such an easy target. For example, you shoot in an enemy, they know where to pre-aim and they probably are pre-aiming if you have to reload, you pop your head up and you're dead. So shoot and move. It doesn't have to be drastically. It can literally be from one window to the next. So make sure you've got good positioning and you shoot and you move. Tip number six is the advanced room clear and it pairs nicely with tip number three. You want to grab one of your friends. If you've got more than one friend, then congratulations. But with that one friend, you're going to go into a room where you know enemies are. The first friend is going to jump right into the room to the other side, drawing all the fire and attention to them. They'll also try and do as much damage as possible. And the second friend will then stay close to the doorway, practicing tip number three, taking cover and should then hopefully finish the job. Pick someone you know who's got very good aim and who's going to be right behind you you do not want to be jumping in first with a five second delay so they can finish you and then aim at the doorway for your teammates it is the advanced room clear rather effective when you go in with stuns and flashes as well tip number seven mountaineer oh my god this perk is insane if you are an aggressive player parachuting in using redeploys jumping off buildings you need to use it. At first, you will feel a little uncomfortable dropping at some of the heights you can drop. I believe it's something like 30 meters, if not more, and a crazy height. If you use the redeploy balloon, you can just straight up land without pulling the chute. <laughs> can if you break your legs, please at me. Um, but from the time of recording this, it has been incredible all season. Please use it if you've not given it a go. And if you do use it, then you know what I'm on about. Tip number eight is moving with Intel. You're trying to make your way to the next circle, next building, make yourself to the prime position to win. Because as we've already discussed, it's all about position. The best way to do so is with a UAV or even better, an advanced UAV so you know 
where your enemies are, which directions they're facing, and the best way to flank them, breach the buildings, and win the game. And that leads me on to tip number nine. UAVs versus advanced UAVs. UAVs will last for 30 seconds and they'll show everyone except from ghosted players who are moving. If a ghosted player is sat still, they will appear on the radar. However, advanced UAVs will show all players, players without ghost, it will show you their direction, and players with ghost, it will show them as a little red dot. So, I'd personally always go for advanced when you can. There are three UAVs popped continuously all together, and from the last one popped, you will then have a minute of advanced UAV. Extremely useful when rotating and making those plays to get to the top positions. Tip number 10, buying your guns from the buy station. Sometimes you land on a quick load of money and you can just buy your own guns. Obviously, it's better to save it for a loadout, but if you know enemies are near and you want to have confidence in your gunfights, then make sure your loadout 1 and loadout 2, your primary guns, are two separate ones depending on the scenarios you need. You could have loadout 1 as your AR and loadout 2, your primary one, as your SMG. So if you're in a bit of a close quarter and part of the map, then you grab your SMG. And coming in with late game as well, if you're bought back and the loadouts are hot, you can always go to a buy station and just buy your guns so then you have a bit more of a chance with the gunfights there as well. Tip number 11, contracts, contracts, contracts. They're scattered across the map. The best ones to do from the get-go are intels. You can land on the intel and if you're playing with teammates, one person lands on them, the other teammates stay in the air and land where the intel repositions from there if you're quick enough you'll have a bunker key to then get in there you can get foresight see where the last circle is and then it's all about getting utility other great contacts to do are the most wanted and then bounties personally i do not like doing the scavengers they just send you all over for very little in return but contracts are great for setting you up for the rest of the game and continuously getting more money if you are in the center of the circle very early on then you will probably have a peaceful time and plenty of time to do these. So make sure you do. Tip number 12, Intel contracts. I cannot emphasize this enough. These are the best contracts to be doing all the way throughout the game, especially at the beginning. You wanna, from the plane, land on one, try find one near a redeploy balloon. That'll make it easier to get into the objective. And from there, it should drop a bunker key card if you're doing it quick enough. And from there, going into the bunker, getting specialist or foresight will up your game for the rest of it. Intel contracts are king. Do them throughout the game for quick money and to find out the next circles and where you're going to be heading. Tip number 13, late game utility. It's all good being in the last circle and having the best position, but if you don't have the utility to go alongside with it, you can make it a bit of a hard situation on yourself. By late game utility, I mean having a buy station, a PDS system, kill streaks, and potentially even some traps. Have all of this, and life should be pretty tough for your opponents as they try and push you for the win. Tip 14 is a personal favorite. It's baiting portable buy stations in the final circles. Now, let's say you're in the final circles, there's no buy stations available. You throw one down in a very bait position out in the open and people just cannot help themselves. They are mosquitoes drawn to the light and it is like shooting fish in a barrel. People just swarm to it, they may smoke it, so probably a good idea to have some thermal sites with you, but you can get so many kills and wipe so many squads just because people can't control the urges to go and res their teammates or buy kill streaks, whatever it is. So please place a portable buy station in the open and just kill people. It's the easiest thing to do to rack up the kills on top of a very good and hard worked win tip 15 welcome to call of duty smoke zone yes from the world series to every game with anyone that has a brain they will use and abuse smokes because it's the only way to make rotations these days you already see a whole line of 50 smokes being fucking made it's like thomas the tank engines on the fucking map himself use thermals please use thermals and obviously that can be counteracted with cold blood but cold blood i don't see it too much personally i do use it myself uh, however, thermals are still very, very good, especially in the smoke zone era. They're useful. Give it a go. At least on one of your guns. Tip number 16. Don't just report hackers. Block them as well. Hackers are the lowest of the lowest. The worst of the worst. Reporting them. Good job. Thumbs up. Hopefully they get banned. 
if not block them so you don't run into them again if there is a blocks player in your lobby you will get notified so you can back out and search for another lobby and hopefully ricochet i know i'm asking for a lot but hopefully you do something coming into the next era of warzone fingers crossed tip number 17 ping is king Yes, this is a connection-based game, and the more YouTube videos you see about Call of Duty, the more you see how diabolical the servers are. So even if you have the best equipment, if you've not got a good connection, it doesn't really matter. So ping is king. Look up how to improve your latency, whether you're in console, PC. Make that a priority rather than upgrading your stuff. Again, if you've got a good connection, you'll feel the difference. You'll feel the registration and have less frustrations as well. Mates, if you've made it this far, you're an absolute legend. Thank you very much for watching the video. Appreciate it. Uh, if you've got tips yourself, please put them down below. And if you want your next game to be an absolute banger, make sure you like the video. And let's get to tip 18. Tip 18, play in the morning if possible. Now, you've probably got school, work, responsibilities. But if you have a day off, just for gaming or your real one day play call of duty warzone in the morning the lobbies I'm, I'm not sure if they're filled with bots or the connection is just better the servers are less strained games are just beautiful in the morning and you'll see a lot of british content creators playing in the morning streaming in the morning oh, it's just beautiful trust me warzone in the mornings mwah, are the best tip 19 the rat olympics back in Verdansk, i used to stream a hell of a lot and we'd run the rat olympics which is where we had contestants from four people all try and make it to the final circle even win the game without getting a single kill or a single point of damage now i want you to do this just so you can prove to yourselves you can make it to the final circles without even shooting your gun so when you play with a gun, you know exactly what to do, where to position yourself, and then you can kill people as well. Practice being in the best position where people aren't going to find you or you're going to surprise them and end up on top. The Rat Olympics. I should make a video on that. Let me, let me know if you want me to do a Rat Olympics. Why not? It's something different. It was really funny when we used to do it. Finally, tip number 20. It's been a journey. Be more mindful. You're watching this video for tips to win more games. So pick a few of these tips, put them into practice. Uh, they're all situational. You know, I've mentioned a few things about end game, late game, early game. You know, take a few of these tips, put them into practice, try new things, watch different videos, see what works for some and doesn't for others. But yeah, it's, it's tough. You know, 120 people and one person comes out on top. Don't be too hard on yourself and share the tips um, or your own tips down below.